Since the Industrial Revolution, human and natural activities have increased the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. The ocean acts like a big sponge, absorbing about a third of those emissions. When carbon dioxide dissolves in seawater, it initiates a series of chemical reactions which release hydrogen ions. An increase in hydrogen ions causes a decrease in the pH of the water, making the ocean more acidic. We call this process ocean acidification. The most significant potential impact of ocean acidification is on calcifying organisms, organisms that build shells. The building blocks of these shells are carbonate ions. As the carbon dioxide in the water increases, the amount of carbonate ions decrease which reduces the rate of calcification and reduces the ability of these organisms to make shells. This has happened before. According to the geological record, there have been times when the ocean pH has dropped such that calcification has stopped, or at least been greatly reduced. And those periods seem to coincide with mass extinction events when a lot of the species have been removed from the planet. Now the question is, did ocean acidification lead to that mass extinction, or was there some underlying phenomenon that was going on that caused the mass extinction and for the oceans to become acidic? And the, the fossil record is just not um, fine enough to really tweak out which came first. Ocean acidification also has the potential to indirectly impact other marine life. A decrease in calcification could significantly affect the food supply of copepods, pteropods, and shellfish that pollock, herring, pink salmon, and sea otters consume. This disruption in the food chain could affect many animals, including humans. Alaska is particularly susceptible to ocean acidification. Cold water can absorb more carbon dioxide than warm water. The people of Alaska are especially dependent on the ocean for their food supply and commerce. Today in Alaska, many people still live a subsistence-based lifestyle, and commercial fishing is one of the state's top industries. If ocean acidification leads to a decreased population of crabs, clams, and fish, the commercial fishing industry in Alaska may decline. This would result in a loss of revenue and jobs, as well as higher seafood prices for grocery stores and restaurants everywhere. It's our responsibility to be here in Alaska doing this research. We need to make it a priority here um, that, that it's going to be an impact on our fisheries. So we need to be the group uh, that, that makes it a priority and, and understands the best we can um, of, of the changes that are going to occur and then giving that information to our policy managers at the state level. Most scientists believe that one way to alleviate the problem of ocean acidification is to reduce carbon emissions. More research is needed to better understand how ocean acidification will impact people, economies, and communities. This video is produced by the Alaska Center for Climate Assessment and Policy, or ACAP, at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Funded by National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, ACAP provides scientific information about climate change to a range of stakeholders and helps Alaskan communities, agencies, and industry adapt to a changing climate. The video features the research and laboratory work of Dr. Jeremy Mathis, Professor of Chemical Oceanography in the School of Fisheries and Ocean Sciences at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. His research focuses on marine biogeochemistry with an application in Alaskan waters. For more information, contact ACAP at 907-474-7812 or acap at uaf.edu.